welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be replacing a uh, turbo actuator on my truck. I've been having some problems with it not working like it's supposed to. So I got a new one here and we're going to replace it and uh, put this one on. So hopefully that'll fix my problem. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll get to it. So the first thing I did here is I disconnected this lower radiator hose. And I'm getting all the uh, coolant drained out. And I just went to Lowe's and I bought one of these Craftsman big tubs and I pretty much caught all of it. I just slowly worked this off, angling them down like this and uh, we captured almost all the coolant. Got a little bit on the frame here but pretty much all of it went in here. So the next thing I went and bought to make this a little easier is I bought this little Craftsman quarter inch ratchet. And you can see there's a five millimeter um, Milwaukee Allen head I got. And to get these bolts off, they're down in here. So for the top ones, I just used a five millimeter uh, socket Allen. And I was able to just get them right here, these two. But for this, this is a little wrench quarter inch and uh, I'm going to use it and get these out on the bottom. So as you can see they're kind of hard to get to because of this coil spring and shock mount tower especially on this side. I don't even think I can get the good angle in here but here's the bolt right here. So I'm going to use this little quarter inch deal I got here and it just fits in there just enough to to get this broke loose and uh, I'm gonna get these broke loose with this little wrench and we'll go from there so here's that bottom left side bowl as you can see you can uh, see the threads right here so I just took some PB blaster and soaked these and you can see it uh, only can come out so far and you can't get your uh, tool on it anymore. So to finish backing it all the way out to where I got it now, I just grabbed a little Allen key like this and just kind of just worked it. it. Took me some time, but I uh, finally got it loose enough I could turn it with my fingers. So I finally got that one out. And that'll be the hardest one uh, to do out of all of them. If you get that little craftsman tool like I was showing you, you can uh, get it out of there without stripping it. Um, just soak them down with some PB Blaster first and let them sit. Uh, these are kind of a little rusty, but not too bad, but they all broke loose. The top ones were really easy. They weren't that tight at all, but the bottom ones uh, were pretty tight. So I got them all loose. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these electronics here which is a gray pull tab I'll use a pick slide that off undo this bolt right here and uh, get these cables out of the way and then we should be ready to pull the rest of these bolts out and remove this thing so I got all the screws out these two short ones come out the top and there's two long ones on the bottom but since that other one's up against the shock tower it has to stay in the actuator when we remove it. So we got all this disconnected, so we're ready to pull this off here. So now what you want to do is you want to check your uh, turbo here, with this lever, and make sure it moves easily back and forth. And if it's stuck, then you're going to have to end up and replace this entire turbo. So as you can see, mine moves very easily back and forth to the lines. And you can see right there, there's a guide hole and it should fit right in that hole and you'll be able to see it and it should line up with that hole 
so you can see how easy it moves um, no binding so my turbocharger is in good shape so we're just going to replace this actuator I'm going to clean all this rust off um, get all this cleaned out good and then we'll proceed with putting the new actuator on all right so now that we got all this metal on here nice and cleaned up um, we're going to go prep the new actuator and uh, there's a gauge I'm going to put on here I'm going to show you guys um, in case yours doesn't turn this good and uh, show you where it should actually line up but there's actually indicator marks on here but they send a gauge in the package I'll show you um, it's a little harder to get down in here and clean on the bottom but the main part I'm worried most about is right here where the coolant goes where it comes in and then goes out you want this real nice and clean so that gasket uh, seals up good against that so to get mine clean I just used a little wire brush on my drill and used a little brush like this and cleaned it off there wiped it off and then I took some compressed air and blew all this out blew this little sight hole out made sure all this is clean so once you get all that clean uh, then we'll go to the next step which is prepping the actuator so here's the uh, actuator it's a genuine whole set Cummins actuator and the part number for this is a 5579127H so we have a uh, diesel uh, repair shop that does injectors, turbos, and all this kind of stuff uh, close by to me. So I was able to get this actuator for a pretty good price compared to most places. It was, uh, I think, if you get one from Cummins, it's like $1,400. And if you go to a Dodge dealer, good luck getting them to even replace this. They'll probably want to replace the entire turbo. So here's our new actuator. And it comes with gaskets already on it. And here's the uh, uh, mounting kit that came with it. And if it didn't, for some reason, it's uh, part number 4032075. So it comes with zip ties, which we probably won't need. Uh, the grease for the actuator gear. More gaskets. I won't need those. And here's this gauge. Comes with some alignment bolts and uh, new mounting hardware. So this is the alignment gauge that I was telling you guys about. Um, it's for a HE300VE turbocharger, uh, which is what we got. And uh, I'll show you guys how that works. We got new screws, and we won't be able to use these mounting studs. Because once I get this uh, in there on that bottom one, we won't be able to get it back out. So I'm just going to have to install this bolt and we won't be able to use it. So we'll just have to carefully do it. So the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to take this tube of grease and I'm going to put on this gear and I'm going to install it on the uh, actuator arm on the turbo. I'm going to grease it. And then we're gonna move on with uh, calibration. So if you can see down in here, I got my uh, alignment gauge set in. And there's a green mark. And you'll notice it says install position. So when we put this on, this is where we want the lever to be. That's the install position when you put the actuator on and do the second calibration. So you see the two marks. Um, it's corresponding that it should go over and touch that green mark and it should come up and touch this green mark So we're good there and We want to grease this with this tube of grease and We'll pull this out and make sure we leave it in the install position for the calibration All right, so now that we got our grease on our gear lever down here and our grease on this I got it plugged in, so now I'm going to use the Alpha OBD 
and with the key on we're going to do a pre-alignment on this. So I'm going to come down here, select my procedure, go all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to click Turbo Actuator Pre-Align Self-Calibrate. So it's going to tell me, before continuing, please ensure that the coolant has been partially drained and the VGT has been removed from the turbocharger. If the removal step is not complete prior to continuing, damage may occur to the actuator. Alright, so we got our removed. So now we're going to hit start. Again, caution. VGT actuator must be removed from the turbocharger to perform this function. So it's removed. We're going to click OK. You can see it's doing its thing up there. All right, procedure is now complete. So now that we got this bolted on, and tighten these down hand tight in a crisscross pattern. So you start up here, tighten this one, go down here, tighten this one, tighten this one, then tighten this one. We're going to come back to our thing and it says the turbocharger actuator must be installed on uh, the turbo before performing this step. So we're going to hit OK. And now it's going to do its thing again. We're going to hit procedure complete. Go back. We're going to go to this one. This procedure performs turbo self calibration, has been pre aligned and installed on the vehicle. So we've done that. Now it's going to do that one more time. I like to do it twice just to make sure it's good to go. Um, that one, one test that we did um, pre aligned slash self calibrate, it does the pre align first and then you uh, mount it and then you hit OK again and then it will do self calibrate and then I come down here to the bottom and just do the self calibrate just one more time just to make sure it's good to go. So it so says turbo actuators calibrated complete, procedure complete. So now we can torque these down and refill the coolant and put the truck back together. So now we're going to set our torque wrench at 80 inch pounds and we're only going to be able to use this torque wrench on the top two. So we're going to start out and you'll want to get it in here and you'll torque this top right one down to 80 inch pounds. I've already done mine but you'll torque that one. And then you'll come down to the bottom one and you'll tighten it down just by hand and then you'll take your little quarter inch ratchet and from where you've tightened it by hand, put it in there and you rotate it up, tighten it 90 degrees. And that should get you pretty close to 80 inch pounds. And then we'll go back up here to the top left one and we'll torque it down to 80 inch pounds. We'll go down to the bottom right one, get it snugged up by hand um, pretty tight. And then we'll take it and start up here, and rotate it 90 degrees. And that should get you close to 80 inch pounds because you can't get a torque wrench on those and that's uh, pretty close to it so then don't forget to put your um, keeper lock keeper in and then you'll take your fastener here and put your 10 millimeter bolt in and tighten it down so I just got mine snug in my hand in there and tighten it so now we've got that fully installed, calibrated, ready to go. Now we're gonna refill the coolant. 